We watch the skies every day. Is it sunny, cloudy, rainy? You know the sun rises and sets every day. You also know that the length of day varies, nights being longer or shorter depending on the time of year. You may even have noticed that at night star constellations rise and set just like the sun. But there is much more. What if we pay a bit more attention to the sky beyond the clouds? That's exactly what we are doing with the European Space Agency's Gaia project. We are building a map of the Milky Way to help us navigate through space, like a Google Maps for the galaxy. Gaia is the result of hundreds of years of knowledge gathered by astronomers, scientists, and curious people all over the world. Let us start simple. Let's say you want to see how the sun moves across the sky. You can do this with the solar cam. Here's how it works. The inside of this can is covered with photosensitive paper, and through the pinhole located here, the sunlight can fall on the paper, resulting in a snapshot of the sun. If you mount the solar can and you leave it for up to six months, you will get a beautiful record of the sun's motion across the sky for every day. This image shows the picture recorded by a solar can mounted for six months with a view of the old observatory in Leiden. You can see how the sun moves from east to west over the sky every day, and you can see how the height reached at noon varies. These basic observations of the sky have been used by humans to track the seasons and the agricultural cycles. When should I sow? And when should I harvest? Great care was taken early on to precisely track the locations of constellations in the sky over the course of a year. These naked eye observations of the sky led to an impressive body of scientific knowledge with many applications, such as predicting the seasons, navigation at sea, and timekeeping. Precise tracking of the stars also revealed that some stars appear to move with respect to constellations. We learned that these are not stars, but planets in our solar system. Naked eye observations thus led to the understanding of our solar system and the laws of planetary motion and gravity. However, the naked eye is limited in precision. The invention of the telescope in the 17th century really changed all this, as it enabled us to make much more precise measurements of star positions which enabled the direct observation of the motion of the Earth around the Sun. I have an experiment that I want you all to do with me right here, right now. Stretch your arm in front of you and hold up your thumb. If you look at your thumb with one eye open and one eye closed, and you alternate the opening and closing of your eyes, you will see the, that your thumb appears to jump back and forth against the scene in your background. Using this same principle, we can look at this animation of the Earth moving around the sun. If we were to track the position of the yellow star with respect to the background stars, notice how the line of sight to the star constantly changes as we orbit the sun. This results in an apparent circular motion of the star over the course of a year. Notice also how the circle described by the star decreases in size if the star is moved further away. We call this apparent motion of the star parallax. To measure the parallax of a star, we need to determine the size of the circle it describes in the sky. Even for the nearest stars, this is more than 60 times smaller than the size that can be measured with the naked eye. To come back to our solar can, the size of the parallax motion of the nearest stars corresponds to seeing the can from a distance of 30 kilometers. In the 19th century, the first parallax of a star was successfully measured. This was an important milestone in our study of the skies, because the parallax measurement can be translated into a distance to the star. In fact, this is the only direct means we have of establishing distances to stars. And distance is essential if you want to create a precise map of the Milky Way. There's another important thing to know about stars. They move through space. Indeed, in the 18th century, astronomers noted that star positions on the sky had changed slightly compared to star catalogs from 2,000 years ago. This change in the position is referred to as proper motion. In the image, we see a fast-moving star changing position between 1991 and 2007. These motions are very small. The fastest-moving stars change position over one year by only the width of our solar can seen from 30 kilometers. The developments that enabled the measurement of parallax also made it possible to measure proper motions during the lifetime of a human being. Here, we have an animation that shows what the sky would look like if we could see the motions of the stars. 
See how the stars are going back and forth because of the Earth's motion around the Sun, and how the constellation of the Big Dipper changes shape due to the changing positions of the stars over time. We now have a very dynamic picture of our night skies. Over the course of the 19th and 20th centuries, parallax and stellar motions were measured to a precision which would allow us to see our solar can from 3,000 kilometers, thus unveiling a 3D picture of the location of stars within a few tens of light years from the Sun, another step closer to our Milky Way maps. In the 20th century, it became clear that further improvement in the measurements of star positions would be hindered by the Earth's atmosphere and gravity which lead to errors in the measurements of star positions. This meant we could not expand our knowledge of the 3D locations and the motions of the stars beyond the immediate neighborhood of the Sun. So, we needed to go to space. The first satellite measuring positions, Hipparchus, was launched in 1989. Hipparchus measured star positions to a precision that would allow you to make out the solar can from 30,000 kilometers, well over halfway around the Earth. This expanded the number of stars with a measured parallax from a few thousand to 120,000 and expanded the 3D map of star locations out to a thousand light years. But for a map of the Milky Way, we needed even more, and so the Gaia project was developed. The first proposals for the Gaia satellite were made in the early 1990s and it was launched in 2013. Gaia is observing the stars from its orbit around the Sun and measures the positions of two billion stars to a precision that lets us make out that solar can from more than one and a half million kilometers away, well beyond the distance to the Moon. Gaia is producing an accurate 3D map of star locations and measures star motions throughout our home galaxy. We can see in this image the vast reach of our current distance measurements within the Milky Way. But why do we need a Milky Way map? Let me end with two amazing examples. Here we see the New Horizons spacecraft, which was sent on a mission to visit Pluto and send back images. After its visit to Pluto in 2015, it was decided that the spacecraft would continue its journey toward another dwarf planet beyond Pluto called Arrokoth. However, to make sure the spacecraft was steered in the right direction, the location of Arrokoth had to be precisely measured with respect to the stars as illustrated in this image. The tiny green circle shows a speck of light, Arrokoth, and the surrounding stars are used as reference points to measure its position. However, we learned that stars change position over the course of time due to the yearly back and forth motion and their motion through space. Our reference points are thus constantly changing, and we need to work out where the stars are at exactly the moment the snapshot of Arrokoth was taken. Thanks to Gaia's star map, the New Horizons team could precisely navigate their spacecraft. It resulted in this spectacular image of Arrokot, recorded in 2019. This is a beautiful illustration of accurate navigation in space, at the location many billions of kilometers away from us, enabled by the power of a precise star map. This leads me to my final example. Thanks to Gaia, we can now zoom out to the scale of the entire Milky Way. From the parallaxes and proper motions of the stars, we can figure out not only where they are in space, but also how they are moving in three dimensions. This allowed the identification of a surprising population of stars in the Milky Way that seem to move around our galaxy in a direction contrary to that of most stars. This is evidence that a collision took place between the Milky Way and another galaxy 10 billion years ago. This event is illustrated in this animation. The blue-colored stars were already part of our Milky Way galaxy 10 billion years ago. And the red stars belong to the other galaxy called Gaia Enceladus that collided with our Milky Way. Notice how the blue stars move clockwise around the middle of the Milky Way, while the red stars are moving in the counterclockwise direction. Because the counterclockwise motion was preserved over 10 billion years since the collision, we can track down today the stars from Gaia Enceladus. Thus, thanks to our powerful Gaia star map, we can peer deep into the history of our Milky Way galaxy. What is next? As Gaia continues collecting data, its star map will become ever more precise, allowing us to see tiny deviations in the motions of the stars. These deviations can reveal the existence of planets orbiting the stars 
and the presence of more exotic objects, such as small black holes around which the stars orbit. On 13 June 2022, our next Gaia star map will be released. Thanks to the Gaia project, future star maps will enable us to find tens of thousands of new planets around stars. The future is truly looking bright.